about to leave Already packing, come with me I'm not really asking We'll get away to a place where we don't know About to see the world in action What we can be, life with no distractions We'll get away, this is what we waited for year of planning, over a year, we finally hit the road. Yay! After spending five weeks in Branson, moving into our fifth row, and just adjusting to life, we decided that we needed to set out on our first adventure. We had looked at going to the Northeast because that's an area that we both really love and we were looking forward to exploring, but... And it would be cool in the summer. It would be cool in the Cooler. summer. Cooler. Cooler. But after doing some research, we realized that maybe it wasn't the best option for us. So small roads, toll roads, very busy, congested, um, not as wide open spaces as in the West or the Southwest. So that's why we decided to uh, come out West uh, through Oklahoma, North Texas, and then into New Mexico and Arizona and then eventually down into Southern California uh, before we turn around and do it all again, going back to Branson, Missouri for the holidays with family. Even though we do want to do that someday, we're just gonna take the Northeast and put it up on a shelf. We will do yeah, it someday, yeah. definitely. But we may just wait until we feel a little bit more confident in our ability to tow the vehicle and just have a little bit more awareness of what we can do, what roads we can travel on, what we feel comfortable doing. On July 13th, we made our first move. We packed up everything in Branson and we headed for Oklahoma City. We stayed a night there just in a convenient park close to I-40 where we could just pull off not even necessarily have to unhook the vehicle, even though we did, um, but we could just stay for one night to get us back on the road to our first real stop, which was Amarillo. Amarillo. So when we made it to Amarillo, uh, it was early afternoon, it was hot, it was sunny, it was in the 90s, uh, so we got the fifth wheel set up, just everything to, uh, to get going, uh, the slides out, got the the power hooked up turned on the air conditioning way high uh, <laughs> for Olivia so that she could stay uh, we loaded the dogs up and we headed out to Palo Duro Canyon mm -hmm. we didn't make it very far before our first stop at the scenic overlook after taking turns staying with the dogs, we each got a look at the canyon, the second largest in the U.S. We then made the drive along the steep curbs as we descended to the bottom. The road, though steep and curvy at this one point, was paved and in excellent shape throughout the park. We stopped at a campground to let Darcy and Zeke stretch their legs, and well, we were all feeling the 100 degree heat, but all was remedied with a quick drink. We slowly made our way through the canyon. Though it was well visited, there were times when we felt we had the place entirely to ourselves. I 
really hadn't heard much about Palo Duro before our visit. And honestly, I'm not sure why. Is it just a well-kept secret? All I know is that driving into the canyon was as if we were stepping back in time, each moment of the descent reflecting the millions of years it took to create this natural wonder. We're sitting here. We have left the dogs inside the fifth wheel for the first time. We can hear them walking around. We're just sitting here to see if we can hear them digging, scratching, barking. Yeah, any of those things. I'm terrified because I don't want them to tear something out. But at the same time, we can't always stay with them or take them with us everywhere, so. We covered all the seats and then we put boxes in the seats so they can't even get up on it. And then we closed the bedroom door because the cat is in there. And we put a baby gate out on the steps in order to keep Darcy from getting to the door because she's obsessive. And if she knows the cat is in there, she will scratch at the bottom of the door, so. I wish we had a camera the so that we could we see. Do. What's going on? We really need to get like a baby monitor camera. We do. We do. We need to get one of those that does the temperature and the yeah. humidity alarms. My hair. Anyway, <sighs> so we're just going to sit Jeez. here and see. So far they're being pretty good. I don't really hear them doing what we can tell. too much. We'll see what happens. We've been in Amarillo since Sunday night. It's now Wednesday night. We really haven't picked up the camera to vlog because this is still new to us. Plus, it's just not natural to think, ooh, get the camera and film things. So we're still trying to get used to things. Um, but we've just left the dogs for the first time, trying to convince ourselves to have a good time. We're making our way out to Cadillac Ranch. Whereas Palo Duro is a wondrous example of unspoiled nature, Cadillac Ranch's identity is defined by the marks left by its numerous visitors. We were joined by other curious travelers, many of whom had obviously made an impromptu stop during this journey along I-40. The public art installation was created in 1974 by the Ant Farm, a group based in San Francisco who sought ways to redefine the way we interpret and interact with popular icons. These 10 half-buried Cadillacs certainly challenge the status quo, and as you arm yourself with spray paint, you become an everlasting part of this installation's 45 years and counting history. Is it worth a stop? Absolutely. There's no parking lot, but there seems to be plenty of room on the side of the road for vehicles of any size, including RVs and tour buses. And even better, there's no admission cost. The only cost is what you decide to spend on spray paint in order to create your own masterpiece.
We were staying at the Big Texan RV Ranch, so of course we had to go down the road to eat at the famous steakhouse we had heard so much about. Is it? The steaks were pretty good, but maybe the best part of the entire meal was this gigantic piece of chocolate cake. But at $12 a slice, it was definitely a splurge. Overall, it was a pretty good experience, but I think I would definitely rather be there on a weekend. Our week was pretty busy with work and errands, so we didn't get out as much as expected. Our last night, we did eat at a Mexican place that was recommended by She Bites. Justin's carne asada and my tacos were pretty tasty. That's about all we have for this video. We're still trying to adjust to getting used to this whole talking to a camera thing and remembering to pick up the camera and film. So we didn't get a whole lot of footage here in Amarillo, but we will be getting better <laughs> at making sure that we fully document our adventures in the future. So in the meantime, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel so you make sure that you don't miss out any of the fun. We have a lot of really great things that are coming up and we wanna make sure that you're there for every step of the way. We are finally getting started on our first full-time RV adventure. <laughs> there was like cow poop smell there for a while too and I was like, cause there's cows or something at that rodeo. On January 13th, we packed up and we left for, not July. January 13th. <laughs> On July 13th. After a full year of planning, over a year, we finally hit the road. Yay! <laughs> All right. Okay. Cut.